I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the stunning Marbella, Spain. I am on the Costa del Sol between Malaga and Gibraltar in the Spanish Riviera, the city called Marbella. This video is everything that you need to know before you go, including tips and tricks about where to stay, what to do, what things cost, as well as the atmosphere and vibe here in Marbella. So stay tuned gonna tell you all about it. Let's start with a little bit of history about the city. The Romans called this city the Salt City, but it was the Moors that controlled the area for 700 years that gave it the basis of what we call today Marbella. It wasn't until the late 1400s when the Spaniards came in and the Christians came in and when the Moors handed over the keys to the city that it changed its name to what we have today as Marbella. Marbella remained a small fishing village until the 1940s when the aristocratic family, the Van Honlos, bought a finca in the area. Once they bought the finca, they thought this place was amazing and so they started inviting all of their friends. As a result, you have the Spanish Riviera and lifestyles of the rich and famous here. So let's talk a little bit about logistics for just a moment. Where are we located? We are located halfway in between Gibraltar and Malaga, which is the capital city of the province of Malaga. You can fly into either airport and it is about an hour drive into Marbella. There are a few ways to get here. One, you can take a taxi. Taxi taxis are quite expensive, possibly 80 to 100 euros to get here. You can rent a car through all of the major rental companies like Hertz and Avis or Europe car. You can also take a bus if you want to and the bus is the most economical way. The buses take a little over an hour to an hour and a half and sometimes you can get them as inexpensive as 10 euros. So depending on your travel style, you can get here with a private car, with a taxi, or on a bus. So the weather, in the middle of the summer, it gets to the mid to high 90s, but not for very long. And in the evenings, it cools off to the mid to mid 70s to low 80s. I'm here in September and I would say one day it was about 90 degrees. The rest of the days have been mid 80s. And in the evening, it's a nice, delicious around 70 degrees. I don't need a scarf. I just need um, sleeves that cover my shoulders and I've been wearing little skirts and open toe shoes the entire time I've been here. The weather is beautiful. I do have to say I think it's a little bit warmer than it is in Malaga though and I believe it's because there is a mountain behind us that is blocking some of the wind. But if you are close to the ocean, you have that beautiful Mediterranean breeze that comes off the sea every day, all day long. That is so delicious. There are about 150,000 people that live in Marbella, but what's interesting is about half the people that live here only live here 50% of the time. There are so many second homes in Marbella. People from Northern Europe that wanna spend the winters down here where the weather is divine. Even though it might cost you about 80 euros to get here from an airport, it is relatively easy to not have a car once you're in Marbella. It is a very walkable city. You see people out in the mornings running and walking, people doing paseos in the evenings. It's a lovely, lovely place just to walk around and you actually are not walking very far. If you stay very close to the beach, and the Casco Antigua, which is the old town. If you would like to get a car, then it's going to cost you anywhere from 16 to 25 euros a night to park your car, and that's in a parking garage. You can also park on the street, but you're gonna have to put money in every two hours. So if you don't need a car, don't get a car. It's so easy to take a taxi if you wanna go to Puerto Banus or if you wanna go to Mijas or something like that, you can take a taxi or a bus. It's relatively easy and inexpensive. This video is all about tips and tricks for coming to Marbella, but if you would like additional information, go to the description below and join the tribe. This is my exclusive email list where I share additional ideas and tips and tricks and hacks and all things laid back luxury. Description below, join the tribe. You wanna be a member. If you are not going to be staying on the beach, then I suggest that you stay in the old town. The only thing about the old town is, is there's not a lot of wind and air movement. So you want to make sure that your hotel does have air conditioning. 
Honestly, I just suggest that you stay on the beach. It may be just a little bit more expensive, but it is so beautiful in the evening to do a paseo and go have dinner down there. And it's super easy to go this way to the old town and have breakfast, go take your photos, see the beautiful gardenias and the pots on the walls. It's really, really beautiful, but I think you should stay on the beach. Speaking of the beach, there are about four and a half miles between the Old Town Marbella and Puerto Banus, where you can go beach hopping in any style that you want. You can go lay on the beach on your own beach towel, bring your stuff with you, and it's absolutely free. You can get a beach chair, or what they call here a hamaca, in an independent place for about seven euros, or you can go to one of the beach clubs like Soleo or Amare or Nikki Beach, where you can spend 25, 30 euros, plus all the food and drinks. So no matter what you want, you can have the beach lifestyle of your choice here in Marbella. Here in this area, they speak the Andalusian dialect of Spanish. It's actually quite fast. They don't use the C, they make it a, a TH. Uh, very different than if you learned your Spanish in Mexico and they shorten their words quite a bit. Here also, you're in the heart of Europe in the Schengen area in Spain, so they are on the Euro. So what should you pack when you come to Marbella? If you're headed to the beach, you bring your sunscreen, you bring your beach bag, your bathing suit, and you can wear flip-flops and a cover-up. If you're going to go to into any restaurant or cafe or anything, you have to have a beach cover-up. They do not allow you to just show up and sit down in your bathing suit, so that's super important. It's relatively casual down at the beach as well, so if you just have a nice cover-up, that's all you're going to need. The rest of the time when you are not at the beach, I recommend that you wear cute little dresses, little flowy short dresses. Again, it's quite warm here. I have a flowy shirt, which is quite perfect. Make sure you bring your sunglasses as there's about 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 hours of sun every day. Um, currently in September, I don't need pants, but I have seen a few women in the evenings wearing long pants or long skirts. Make sure to bring bright colors, soft colors, very feminine attire. As far as shoes are concerned, ladies, besides the flip-flops when you go to the beach, you can wear cute little sandals or in the evening, I would wear wedges. The streets and the sidewalks are relatively, what I would say, safe and even, so you can wear your stilettos if you so desire. Coming to Marbella, you can spend as little as two or three days or as long as you want. It is a very laid back, low key, kind of beachy lifestyle. Not surfer beachy, but just sort of low key, really nice, easy going lifestyle. Breakfast is about 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. Lunch is around 2.30, dinner is around 10, which is a very Spanish timing, but I think that the breakfasts are a little bit later in the morning than they typically are in the rest of Spain, simply because everybody here seems to be on vacation. For me, I would say that four nights, five days is probably the best for Marbella. There's plenty to do here, and in those five days, you can spend plenty of time at the beach, you can go to the old town, you can eat some delicious seafood, and you can take a day trip or two. If you're interested in taking day trips, you can check out Ronda, you can check out Mijas, you can also check out Caminito del Rey. If you're interested in any day trips, make sure to check out my other videos that talk about day trips in the description below. Whether you're getting a chair or not, or spending time in one of the fancy beach clubs, the beach is absolutely perfect. It is a very nice sand. It is a little bit of a charcoal color. So being a little bit darker, it actually gets quite hot. There are plenty of waves, not surfing waves, but there have been plenty of waves. The water is so cold and so salty, which I absolutely love. And you don't need uh, any kind of swim shoes because the sand goes right into the water. There may be a few pe pebbles that have um, come up with the waves and the tide, but it's relatively easy to get in and out of the sea here in Marbella. So you're in Marbella and you don't want to spend any time at the beach, what should you do? Well, I went on a wonderful food tour with Taste Marbella. 
I had a fantastic guide. Her name was Yvonne. She is half Spanish, half American, and it was a great way to introduce myself to the city, and it was all in the old town, my first evening in town. So this tour has been fantastic so far, and I am having a dish that actually comes from Cadiz, or Cadiz. It is their version of a chicharron. It looks like a piece of cured bacon. Of course, in the States, when we get chicharron, it is fried, but look how delicious this looks. Uh -huh. A little bit of spice, a little bit of paprika, and a little bit of salt. It is so, so yummy. It's like kind of bubbly. Anyway, really, really good. Mm -hmm. I always suggest to people when they first hit town that they do a food tour. It's a great introduction to a city. It also introduces you to all the food. And when people are eating and drinking, it is quite social. You never know who you might meet. If you're interested in booking with Taste Marbella, I've left the link in the description below. The only other tour I took while I was in Marbella was with Guru Walks, one of the free tours, and my guide was Diana. She was very informative, local girl, and I really enjoyed my time with her. Tip though, the tour is in Spanish. So either bring a translator with you or be able to speak Spanish. So after you've done your tours and you've gone to the beach, then the next thing to do is to go shopping. There are some wonderful little stores with beautiful dresses and jewelry. There's some pottery. There's also some souvenir shops. Most of those are in the old town. So I would wander around the old town in the morning or late in the afternoon when it's a little bit cooler and all of the shops are open. If you wanna do some fancy shopping, then you need to go over about three and a half miles that way to Puerto Banus. It was created as a luxury marina and there are some gorgeous boats over there and lots and lots of shopping. That shopping includes Dolce & Gabbana, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all of those things, honestly, that you can find all over the world, but it is nice to go over there and check it all out. After you've had a hard day of laying at the beach and going shopping, then the next thing to do is to go out to dinner. There are some wonderful restaurants based in the old town, but honestly, the weather is so beautiful and you can hear the waves crashing if you go and eat on the beach. A recommendation that I have for you is Los Melizos, which was delicious. I actually ate there in Malaga and in Marbella. That is probably my favorite meal so far that I have had in Marbella. If you wanna go for a delicious breakfast or coffee, then you can go to Cappuccino, which is also on the beach as well. You know what? Most of the beach restaurants are low key. They are very romantic. So if you're here with a date or your man or your wife, um, very romantic and very, very, very nice and a great way to spend the evening. And after you've had a delicious meal, then you can do a paseo back to your hotel. Let's talk a little bit about cost before I wrap this up. Hotels on the beach range from $100 to $1,200 a night, depending on where you go. Honestly, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I'd say that $100 hotels are not very nice and the $1,200 hotel is amazing. There are hotels right off the beach, which are probably a little less expensive, but you're gonna be spending anywhere from $100 to $250 for a four-star hotel. You're gonna be spending $75 to $125 for a three-star hotel. Meals, if you are on the beach, you're gonna be spending more than you will be in the old town and more than in the center of the more commercial style. Breakfast will cost you anywhere from say a coffee is a uh, one euro 50 all the way up to three euros on the beach twice as much breakfast for a tortilla or an omelet is maybe four euros or 10 euros on the beach lunch can range anywhere from 15 to 22 euros um, again 22 euros on the beach 12 euros um, in the commercial area of Marbella and dinners you can spend anywhere up to about 40 euros on the beach I would say going to Los Melizos where I had the best meal is going to cost you around 40 to 50 euros for dinner but I promise you it's worth it 
other costs that you might incur, I did mention parking. You're gonna be pay paying anywhere from 17 to 25 euros a day. If you have your own car, buses are around three euros. Taking a taxi to Puerto Banus or to a restaurant are gonna cost you anywhere from five to 13 euros. And then if you're going to go shopping, and in Spain, you definitely want to go shopping, especially for shoes. You can buy great shoes for 20 to 30 euros. And ladies, the beautiful dresses, the Italian linen, I know we're in Spain, but they have Italian linen here. Um, as well as the really pretty dresses, the very flowy dresses, you are going to be spending anywhere from 20 to 50 euros for those dresses. Well worth it because you can't find them at home. In addition to the cost of food, tipping. They are not big tippers in Spain. For me, being from the United States, I prefer to tip quite a lot, so it's a little challenging for me. Here, if you get a coffee, just round up to the nearest euro. If you're having lunch, maybe one euro, two euros. If you're having dinner, I would say four to five euros. In general, they don't tip more than about 10% here, which is really hard for me to do. I wanna just keep giving them. Marbella is a wonderful city, very walkable, low key, laid back, luxury style, definitely luxurious. You can do anything you want or you can do absolutely nothing. I am definitely coming back here to this wonderful city. If you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments below. We all wanna know what we should do and see when we are in Marbella. So thank you so much for watching. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I will see you very soon in Marbella again. Bye y'all. This town is really loud car going by. I think I need one. What do you think?